Okay, today we're going to talk about the ocean, and specifically we're going to be discussing the zones of the ocean, how the ocean can be divided up into different areas, and then also the different lifestyles, depending on where the organisms live, their lifestyle of how they have to behave in that zone. Make sure you fill out your note takers. All right, so there's three primary uh, factors that basically determine what kind of life can live in the different zones of the ocean and how the different zones are, um, well, different from one another. Uh, first of all, obviously, it's the, number of sun, the amount of sunlight uh, each zone is going to get, uh, what the temperature of the zone is, and how much pressure. And as we know, as the sun shines on the water, sunlight's only going to go so deep. And so there are parts of the ocean, lots of parts of the ocean, where there is no sunlight. Um, temperature, of course, is going to um, go down as you get lower in the ocean. And then, of course, increasing pressure the further down you go from all that water pressing down on you. Okay, so we're going to first start with the ocean zones from the shoreline out towards the open ocean. So we're going to start from the shore and work our way out horizontal. Okay, And we're going to center first of all this continental shelf. This is the edge of the continent um, that, that is actually underwater. We would consider this still part of the continent. And at the edge of that, there's a drop off. So um, keep that in mind, this continental shelf right here. We're going to talk about that too. So we got the intertidal zone right at the beginning. Got the neuritic zone and the oceanic zone or the open ocean. And let's describe those. Oh, and then the benthic zone. Okay, so intertidal zone. This is the area between the high tide line and the low tide line. So sometimes this area is underwater and sometimes it's dry. Um, so this is the area where water is going to wash in and then wash out. It's going to have organisms that are adapted to live in this kind of environment where it sometimes is underwater and sometimes isn't. So these organisms are going to have to be able to cling to the bottom as the water rushes in and out. Um, they're going to have to deal with, at times, having no water, um, small tide pools, and things like that. Okay, um, after the intertidal zone, from there to the very edge of the continental shelf, the edge of the continent before the drop-off, is the what we call neuritic zone. Neuritic zone. Um, so it goes out to the edge of the continental shelf and only is about 200 meters deep. Okay. Uh, this is the, actually the largest, um, most diverse area of life. There's more life in the neuritic zone than anywhere else. Um, lots of sunlight, usually reaching almost near the bottom, or near the bottom even. Um, temperatures are going to be stable. Uh, pressure is going to be relatively low compared to other parts of the ocean. You know, you're going to have your coral reefs here and your kelp forests. Um, lots of living things are going to be living in this area. And then your oceanic or open ocean. Remember, we're going horizontal here. This is basically the rest of the ocean, okay, beyond the continental shelf as you go horizontal, okay? And we're actually going to talk about the open ocean, how it's divided into layers as we go down in just a moment. Okay, and then one more zone we got to mention. Um, I think this is at the end of your note takers. So you'll have to find the benthic zone um, just to point it out is that all along the bottom of the ocean, whether or not you are shallow with the, along the continental shelf, or you are all the way down at the very bottom, the abyss, way down at the bottom of the ocean floor, this is what we call the benthic zone. So anytime you're standing on the ocean floor, whether you're knee deep or you had to dive down a thousand feet, that is the benthic zone. It's underneath every zone, and it, like I said, it could be shallow in the shallow areas or in the deep areas. Okay, so uh, now let's talk about the ocean zones as we go vertical. So we're going to go down this time. And as you can see, this is going to um, be drastic changes in sunlight and temperature and, of course, pressure. The further down you go, the more pressure there is. So let's talk about those zones. Okay, so near the surface, we have our sunlight or photic zone. Lots of sunlight, obviously. Then we're going to talk about twilight and the midnight zone and the abyssal zone. 
Okay, so first of all, the sunlight or photic zone, if you can think of photosynthesis, uh, we're talking about light. This, so this is the light zone. Um, this is the top, down to about 200 meters, lots of sunlight. Most of the ocean currents occur here. Um, ocean waves, lots of organisms thrive in this area. Got lots of plankton, phytoplankton, and other organisms. Lots of fish swimming around this area because um, this area gets lots of sunlight. Then we get the twilight zone, and this comes from the name meaning as like, if you think about it as the sun setting is kind of twilight where it's starting to get dark. Um, in fact, very little sunlight reaches this layer, and really it's not enough even for um, photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is not occurring in this layer. And organisms have to be adapted to catch the little bit of light that's coming down here. Uh, so you're going to sometimes see really large eyes. Uh, humans, if we go in this layer, if you were to scuba dive down that deep, um, you would not, well, you'd have to be in special equipment, but you would not be able to see the light because our eyes can't catch, capture this little bit of light that might reach the twilight zone. Um, so lots of interesting creatures down here. One thing to note is you see all this white stuff in the background. Organisms, um, as they are, most of the living things are at the surface uh, when they die. Okay, as all organisms eventually do, all the little phytoplankton, the planktons and fish and everything, even the microscopic organisms, will start to sink. And as it falls down, 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 down through all the layers, down below it, um, uh, ocean divers have call, described it as like ocean snow, all this organic matter that's falling down to the bottom. And in fact, this organic snow is what a lot of these organisms um, survive on as it's coming down or as something dies and floats down they're gonna to try to catch it midnight zone no sunlight from about a thousand to four thousand meters near freezing temperatures lots of high pressure we're talking um, organisms that have to be able to survive in no light and we're going to have lots of photosynthesis and all that and again they're going to rely on that snow of dead stuff that's floating down and then the abyssal zone, anytime 4,000 meters around and below. A lot of uh, references will consider the midnight and abyssal zones the same zone. Um, freezing water, extremely high pressure, not very much food. Seabed, uh, we're talking about like a mud ooze on the floor, on the ground of the seabed, the seafloor. Organisms um, that live this far down have to usually are soft bodied because they can't handle the high pressure if they have hard parts, so a lot of soft-bodied organisms. And um, later we're going to talk about some of the ecosystems down here, like around hydrothermal vents. We'll get into that later, but that would be in the abyssal zone. Okay, later you're going to fill out a sheet, that a diagram, and you're going to label the zones and even draw some organisms in the different layers. And this is something you can come back to to help you fill in that drawing. So... Keep that in mind when you do your drawing of the different layers. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is organisms have to be adapted to live in these different zones. And so we describe organisms' lifestyle as three different things. Either they can be plankton, what we call nectin, or what we call benthos, depending on where they live and how they get around. Okay, so first of all, plankton. All that term means is it's a floater or a very poor swimmer. So we're talking about organisms that, first of all, either swim very little or don't even swim at all. They're just kind of floating and they go where the ocean current takes them. Um, and we can really divide plankton up into two groups. There's something called phytoplankton and zooplankton. Okay, Phytoplankton are your microscopic producers microscopic plant-like organisms that can photosynthesize, hence the phytoplankton. So they are photosynthesizing producers that just float around. Then there's zooplankton, and when I think of zoo, I think of animals, and really these things are consumers. These are microscopic or um, non-swimming animal-like creatures. So let's take a look at some pictures. Okay, so phytoplankton um, is microscopic lives in the photic zone or the sunlit zone because of course it's if they're going to survive they have to be able to or photosynthesize um, of course you're going to have more abundant in the shallow coastal areas um, and where majority of the organisms are in zones that have upwelling we're going to talk about upwelling next class but upwelling where 
nutrient-rich water is being fed to this area. And then, of course, phytoplankton, like plants are the basic producers on land, phytoplankton are the basic um, producers of any ecosystem in the ocean or any aquatic ecosystem. Here's another picture of a phytoplankton, some different weird names, again, all microscopic. All right, zooplankton. These are animals that live all or part of their life drifting. Um, they're either really small, so microscopic, just like the phytoplankton, and oftentimes you need a microscope even to see these things. Um, or they can be um, animals that are at least soft-bodied, like jellyfish that just float around. These are consumers. They eat, um, but they're uh, pretty much drifting through life in the water. Again, um, mostly these drifters are living near uh, especially the zooplankton, they're going to live near the phytoplankton that they eat. So they're going to live in the surface zones. All right, the next group is nectin. These are swimmers. These are any organ, any fish that's swimming in the ocean. Uh, not just fish, but reptiles and mammals and all of that. In fact, if when you go in the ocean, you would be considered nectin because you can swim around. Um, they usually maneuver into the different areas, the different water column. In other words, they can be in the sunlit zone, we even have nectin all the way down, even to the bottom, we've got nectin swimmers. Um, from the surface all the way to the ocean floor. So any organism that can swim is called nectin. Okay, so we can have nectin in all different categories. We can have reptiles, turtles, snakes, crocodiles, iguanas, uh, mammals, whales, seals, otters, manatees, dolphins. These are all swimmers. Uh, fish, okay. And cartilaginous fish, okay, sharks, rays, skates, these are all nectin because they swim. Okay, shrimp, squid. All right, so that leaves us with the organisms that live on the bottom. We call these benthos because they live in the benthic zone, which is just live on the bottom. Okay, so they're either born attached to the bottom or they just live on the bottom. Okay, um, so they're either filter feeders, so some of them are attached to the ocean floor like coral or sponges and, they, and water just passes through them and they filter out food from the water. Um, or they're scavengers, okay, so they're waiting for stuff to die and float to the bottom. Or they're crawling over on top of other benthos type organisms that live on the bottom and eating them. So we're talking about starfish and things like that as well. Um, like we said, there's two types, sessile, they live attached to the bottom. They don't move, or vagrant, where they can move. You don't need to know these two words. But, so we've got barnacles, sponges, corals, sea anemones, clams, oysters. These things don't move. Okay? They just, for the most part, they just kind of live on the bottom. And then, of course, we've got ones that can move. Crabs, sea stars, sea cucumbers, brittle stars. Um, can find these even in the shallow parts of the ocean, all the way down to the furthest reaches down at the very bottom, the abyssal zone. We can find benthos or bottom dwellers. Okay, so see if you can guess which is which. Um, you don't have to write these down, but try to call it out. So we've got um, plankton, nectin, or benthos. Plankton is a floater or a very weak swimmer. Nectos are free swimming, and benthos live on the bottom. So we've got this jellyfish here. What do you think it is? That's right, this is plankton because it's a drifter they are very poor swimmers got this otter here good this is nectin he is a free swimmer again yes nectin a free swimmer this is coral to give you another hint it does live attached to the bottom and they are filter feeders that's right it's benthic Okay, this is an eel. Eels do like to live near the bottom, especially in shallow tropical coral reefs, but they are free swimmers, so this would be nectin. Good, sea snake, we've got nectin again, a free swimmer. Okay, we've got some coral here again, and so this is benthic, living attached to the bottom. Some more coral, benthic, good. Remember, we're guessing. Good. These are nectin. These are swimming manatees. Okay, that would be the end. Uh, make sure you move on to your next activity.